Hello, hello. Isn't that what you say uh, when you knock someone's door and open it and shout out to let them know you're there? So, hello. Is anybody in? Funny, isn't it? The things you miss. Wouldn't it be great to, to hear that call again? Having said that, I'll have to get tidied up a wee bit before I have callers again. I know this, the steamer is straddling the hall floor and I know that I have to step over it um, every time I go down the hall. Um, but if, if I had a visitor, well, health and safety regulations and all that. Yes, I have a habit of leaving things in the circulation route. Uh, I know they're there and I know I have to step over them or walk around them. Uh, but others, well, that's a story in itself. Things in the circulation route. Things which uh, stop us holding to a straight path. Things which block our way or trip us up. The enemy is always looking for ways to stunt our growth and faith. They don't have to be big attacks. They're often so minor that we don't even notice them at the time. We've said from the beginning of our lockdown period that this was a time when we have more time to draw closer to God in prayer and meditation and thanksgiving. You know, going back to our Corona code, stop, look and listen. So how is that going for us? How is it going for you? Have we settled into a new routine which sees a deepening relationship with God? Has our dependency on him increased because we love spending that special time with him? Because we're in awe of the love he has for us and the wonderful creation that he has given us to enjoy? I ask myself these questions. Is our dependency triggered by fear? Fear engendered by the news and the statistics and the, the loss of those we love? Is that what has brought us closer to God in prayer? Are we slipping into a new reality, a new routine which is slowly precluding him? As the restrictions uh, begin to lift, Will we become less dependent on them? Will our old business of life come between us? Because we don't have time just to, to be with him. So how is your lockdown going? How is your journey of faith? You know, this is the driest and warmest April and May there's been for umpteen years. And I've heard many people say that the, the good weather is one of the things which has kept them sane during this period because they could get out for a walk. They could, they could get out into their garden and work. They didn't get soaked if they were queuing um, in shop car, car parks. And yes, we have, thank God for that weather. And I do believe that it has been a godsend. But of course, the enemy would use it against us as it draws us out to business as usual. So that's one possible block in our circulation route. So I say to myself, rule number one, I will remember every time I am outside that the warmth of the sun reflects his love for me and mirrors the warmth of his sun. And I'll give thanks. His love for me. You know, it's very f hard for us to fully understand God's love for us. Sometimes we find it hard to love ourselves and, and that's another obstacle in our route. How could God love me? I'm imperfect, I'm selfish, I'm afraid. I let the enemy color my thinking. Yes, we can find many reasons why God mightn't love us and they distance us from him. These negative emotions can leave us feeling discouraged and defeated even. But if we could have a re revelation of God's love for us, they'd melt away like candle wax in the heat, like Icarus's wings when he flew too close to the sun. So rule number two, never forget that I am the recipient of God's unconditional love. I'm not worthy. 
but he loves me anyway. And he loved me enough to send his son to die on the cross, taking the worst of me on his body and leaving the best. As it says in the advert, I am worth it because Christ died for me. And of course, if we do not fully understand God's love for us, we fail at loving as we should. We fail at loving others as we should. We can't give away what, what we don't receive. So putting our own needs first, that's, that's another thing in our circulation route. Uh, John 4 is a wonderful chapter on God's love. First John 4, starting at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Then in verse 19, we love because he loved us first. So rule number three, remember the great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, with everything you have, and love your neighbour as yourself. You know, when I started this today, I was at a loss at what to say to you, and now I'm having started on this route of having difficulties stopping, I could go on. But that's not the point of these little daily meditations. Really, they are to encourage and uplift you and, yes, to challenge you. So this is today's challenge. Do I fully understand the love that God has for me? That love we hear about in Ephesians chapter 3, the love Paul was praying that the, the Ephesians would understand, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. To finish, I just want to turn to Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith, working through love. You see, love is at the very centre of our faith. The knowledge of God's ginormous love for us and the outworking of that in our lives, that's how we grow in faith. I'll just say that again. The more we understand the depth of love God has for us, the more our faith will grow. And of course, there's trust there as well. The more we understand and trust the depth of love that God has for us, the more our faith will grow. So go, dear friends, out into that sunshine, sunshine, and grow in faith and knowledge of his wonderful love for you. And now to him who by the power of work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. So as I say, dear friends, out you go into that sunshine and enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. And remember, you are loved. <laughs>